Yeah. Yeah, baby. Double bicep wearing this very covering shirt, but it is freezing, so that's what you get. Hello, the initiated. My name is Marcus Yunikala. Today, we are doing a demo on Novo. Again, another Heaviosity library. This one was not sent to me by Heaviosity because I bought it before they could. So this has been something I've had for quite a while. I'm the most familiar with Novo out of their orchestral uh, lineup. But by no means have I, you know, thoroughly rummaged through all of its uh, nooks and crannies. So I thought I'd do that today. Do what we always do. Go through as many of the presets as we possibly can. Comment on things uh, as we uh, go along. Um, even though I did buy this myself, as always, all opinions, both in good and bad, are my own. Whether I get a library or buy it myself doesn't affect that. And um, yeah, what is Novo? Well, it's a string orchestral string sample library, but it is as many of the uh, orchestral libraries they put out. It's far more than that. And in fact, with Forzo, with Vento, uh, with Novo and Symphonic Destruction, I think the strength or the best aspect of these libraries lie in this uh, this processing engine and their craft and their, their art of making these incredible sounds out of these samples so i don't think the strength is in the the you know most hyper realistic uh sampling of the orchestral samples themselves you have the sct uh they take those samples put them in this engine do beautiful engineering beautiful uh craftsmanship and uh they create stunning sounds so that being said, I'm going to take myself to Studio One over here. Um, the way Novo is laid out, uh, I'm going to open the browser tab over here. Uh, it's going to look a bit wonky, but uh, you'll see the layout over here. So when you open Novo, you get traditional and, invo and involved. <laughs> evolved. Uh, evolved is split into string designer and loop designer. So both of these are very processed, um, yeah, high production quality uh, sounds. And traditional is exactly what it says. Violin, section, viola, cello, bass. Then you have a high ensemble texture and, and low ensemble. So these are the traditional orchestral samples. Um, that you can use as well. The way I think this is best structured is to start with Evolved and go with the String Designer first. Uh, again, this I think is the best aspect of all these orchestral uh, libraries they put out. Um, and go with the start with the String Designer because this it's this the most um, playable open high production quality aspect of this library uh, the loop designer is somewhat similar to the string designer but it's obviously revolves around loops so they do have these predetermined loops uh, the way it's laid out is as good as working with loops gets in my estimation because you're still you know stuck with what the loop does obviously you can adjust pitch and the key uh, very freely, but the loops are broken down into um, different components in, in each of the keys, and then you can combine as you go along. So if you want to work that way, um, Heaviosity does it better than anyone else in my estimation. But in terms of the sound, the production quality, the sound of it, uh, it is very similar to the string designer. I just prefer the string designer because it is the most playable. I can actually control uh, pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. So, opening this up, we have further folder. So, stylistically, ambient, dirty and distorted, effects and textures, 
synth, organic, uh, and then we have these loop combos, which we're not going to go into because they're more or less what the loop designer does to my understanding. So we'll uh, go through as many of these as possible. Uh, again, as always, you'll only be hearing the library itself. I do have a limiter on my master bus so that the level for this video is decent. But ambient, uh, I'm going to try and go through hmm, as many as I can. So let's go through that. Then when I run out of steam, we'll uh, do the traditional. But I think this approach is better because you hear kind of maybe the best part of this library and then hear the source material that it, you know, derives from. That being said, the traditional, uh, the stuff in the traditional is also very good. But, you know, uh, this is simply my my view on it. Okay, let's do ambient. Uh, go with it. I will be adjusting the limiter a bit as we go along because there's a bit of fluctuation in the level um, depending on the preset. But uh, so if I'm working the mouse, that's what I'm doing. Again, you can hear that orchestral sound and that feeling, but obviously you have these layers of uh, modernization or, or, or you know, elements of synthesis and effects processing there. And again, I'm gonna play more of the presets that speak to me. So if I'm plowing through something fast, that's the reason. <laughs> really cool i like the the granular stutter effects that sort of come and go again very uh brilliantly designed uh and again i i love that it has a cinematic orchestral feel but we're clearly in this kind of uh modern you know hybrid scoring world <laughs> Thank you. 
So I wouldn't really pair these two together. Uh, I would use them in a separate space. Uh, just like in, in, in Vento and Forzo, I really love these textural uh, samples. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is, I, I believe these are samples from the high ensemble, high and en, high ensemble textures that are in the traditional, but I mean, this sounds just stunning. Yeah, that's beautiful. Obviously, the samples themselves are stunning, but with that tasteful effects processing, uh, that additional productional layer, that's 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 absolutely beautiful. that rhythmic uh, element there and again you can hear that all of these presets here are split into different zones depicted by the, the colors here um, so you can sort of combine as as you as you wish <laughs> Again, sits in a in a wonderful place in a mix. Uh, sometimes you need a, a bit of additional movement, but you don't want to use percussion. And this really sounds maximal, but actually in a mix takes up very little space. So that's extremely pleasant. I tend to really like the rhythmic stuff that uh, Heavy OST does. Uh, you know, uh, some of my favorite presets really come from those uh, folders. I would drench that even more in reverb, which you obviously can do through the engine or wherever else you, you know, if you want to use a third party, uh, really nice, really nice cinematic pad.
It's again an interesting blend of sounds. Maybe you want to combine them, maybe not. Again, like, and if you don't like, for example, I wouldn't be using that arpeggiator uh, pattern. So you just go in and change what it does. Um, but again, like, it puts you in a place, gives you inspiration. Then you hear what you want to do, and you just do the tweaks in the engine and get going. And, and that's the beauty of these instruments. They're so inspiring and, and so flexible and quick. You can just tweak and then get into the results that you're after. But you sometimes you, you just need that initial inspiration to, to get going. F hear something interesting and then go from there. <laughs> That's great. It, it might not sound like much on its own, but when you're writing, let's say, scene, a cue, uh, something like that can be really what, what makes or breaks the, the scene. Uh, and also, you, you hear that it's so easy to put a bit of, bit of more drive on that, and you can get like a really gnarly uh, driving cue out of that. Bit of limiter clipping if you're hearing like nasty clipping it's the it's the limiter um i haven't heard anything like nasty uh, in an unpleasant way coming out of novo because some of these do have just so tasteful distortion uh can't wait to get to some of those but yeah uh, i will be adjusting the limiter again To me, that's S tier. Again, the the stuttering, the glitching, the granularity, beautiful, very again, kind of subdued, but simultaneously maximally impactful. That really puts you in a place. Beautiful, you know, when I do these kind of cluster uh, uh, chords here, it's beautiful kind of density and puffiness and and uh, in in the pads up here. Uh, that's definitely one of my favorites. Again, I've played around with Novo quite a bit, but uh, I also want to use this kind of like as a as an opportunity to deep dive in here and and uh, kind of refresh my memory of what's in here. Again, not super. A super fan of these kind of single note ones. Again, I, I, obviously you could take them in the the sequencer and the arpeggiator, start doing stuff with it. But on its own, not not very inspiring to me.
one of those one of those presets i mean that is world class that is so beautiful inspiring i'll, I'll actually write that song that i was working on i don't i don't, I don't know what it is I'll, it'll be something it sounds so good those textures are so beautiful and they're so well done in this engine that uh, they're extremely playable again one of the uh, obvious criticisms that I've had of of these uh, libraries is that they don't have you know legato um, <laughs> which obviously some of these are uh, older libraries uh, and back then uh, I don't know how many companies did legato I think some did but it, it's it was basically like um, companies just made longs but considering that they didn't use that approach and just with their ability to tweak these you know the basic elements of of any audio engine and also the the use of of, of effects really speak to how much they how mature their ears are and how meticulously they you know put what they have into use to to make these these kind of results but this is you know <laughs> extremely pleasant and playable um but yeah, uh, stunning. Yeah, I really like that top end pair, paired with that low. Uh, I love that some of these have these kind of... Um, I'm not very good at with ident like talking about genres in a in the way they're described in, 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 in a sort of a popular context. I'm not even particularly interested in, <laughs> in uh, you know, obsessing about where the boundaries between genres are. And what defines them but i really like these kind of uh synthetic um uh, a lot of uh, the kind of i don't know if it would be called it's not techno because techno is kind of specific trance something you know electronic uh, synthetic futuristic sounding maybe from the kind of 90s early 2000s kind of uh i really like those kind of sounds Especially when uh, I'm utilizing quite a few of those right now in a, in a soundtrack, so uh, I'm finding that super inspiring. That kind of a sci-fi feel to them, but 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 this kind of maybe a bit of a toyish quality to them. <laughs> Again, there, same thing, that kind of a similar soundscape. Uh, I don't know what that, what electronic music genre that would be, but I love that sound and it's going to be all over 
this uh this thing yeah i mean just the they're so well mixed and produced Could be interesting with an absolutely massive reverb. Again, interesting combo of things. Bit of tweaking you could get bigger big of a cinematic thing Amazing, cinematic, captivating, driving, uh, and again, happens to be exactly what I'm looking for for this soundtrack, so that's most convenient. Better in a different tempo. Okay, we have, have a bit of a pitch thing going there. to say that some of the unevenness in level that comes in because these are reacting dynamically to the velocity uh, you could obviously turn that off but uh, uh, so if there is kind of like different changes I'm trying to be mindful of that and play better in context <laughs> Again, same kind of a uh, style, very, very pleasant to me. Obviously not hyper realistic. I would use that as kind of maybe a support element if I'm lacking sort of certain oomph because that has the kind of the uh, quality of impact, but perhaps not the realism.
interesting details. I would be tweaking and separating those, but... mic on but uh sometimes that happens contact issue i think uh, with the switch not contact um beautiful sound uh, i think i'm actually using this in one of the one of the tracks but you know subtle so mature pristine meticulous meticulously produced beautiful uh sound great for video game stuff scenes whatever a bit too subdued. both layers this reminds me a bit of uh, symphonic destruction stylistically kind of similar it's probably kind of a predecessor uh, to that but this this quiet layer is absolutely stunning here as well i think the lower needs a bit more work uh to be you know hitting sort of massively if that's what you want if not then obviously it's doing what it's supposed to cool again a lot of the time heavy rc put less reverb on these kind of ambient ones that i would um but uh yeah taste thing and again it's not everybody wants to make dark ambient so <laughs> class uh, that's actually one of the tracks that i'm working on for a specific area of the game from another track but yeah b beautiful i just love the stuttering glitching uh, granular stuff beautiful low end that really delivers that meat uh, that's 
beautiful. A bit more simplistic. clipping there. Beautiful pad sound. Obviously a bit, a bit of a shitty playing, I have to be fair. Because with pads, you have to be very mindful and, and, and careful and tasteful in how you do your fingering, um, how you really, you know, split your, your voices and, and exactly where, but this is extremely pleasant sounding. It's a beautiful combination of uh, that kind of top end grit meeting that kind of uh, fluffy, warm blanket of pad. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely breathtaking. That would be really cool in like a combat combat track, kind of swirling here and there, in and out. Yeah, very nice. That could work really well in kind of a medium tense track. I'm going to have to see where we're actually going here. Uh, We'll do this to the end. An interesting um, organ pipe-like texture. Again, it kind of might seem unassuming, but for a track where you want to go for tension, but it's not full blown, it's kind of building up, that's absolutely perfect.
kind of the same thing. Kind of works in a fun combat track. Not my kind of a thing. Okay, so we did ambient. Uh, <laughs> I'm slowly beginning to realize that I was a fool uh, for thinking that I could endure the uh, all of these. So we're going to have to start um, making executive decisions about what we're going to look at. But Dirty and Distorted will do one from each letter. Planet in Despair, Adrenal... Adrenalixer, airy with some grit, astral revs. Uh, God damn it! I want to do all of these. Hmm. Maybe if I'm really fast. Cool. Um, one of the things that uh, I do notice that as we went through ambient, you probably heard a bunch of stuff that could be in dirty and distorted, could be in organic. So the folder structure and the naming isn't super useful. Uh, and I think they've actually woken up to this realization with, you know, if you look at how stuff is laid out in Mosaic, uh, it's far better. I think uh makes sense to do more like have a folder based on rhythm and then, you know, have a, a subfolder for rhythm, mellow, rhythm, grit, or, or whatever else. Makes a lot more sense. So going through the presets based on these descriptions isn't exactly uh isn't exactly uh the best way to do that. So you kinda have to figure out your own path through them and categorize them and then uh, go that way. At least I think I need to. So worth thinking about. But I already think it's something they've uh, realized themselves. <laughs> vanilla to my taste from b let's do oh god they they have such good names cool bit more Reverb. We gotta do building aggression. low end really fucking good uh something from c let's do circular thinking because that's what i do Yeah. 
Yeah, really good. To me, that sounds like the perfect marriage between the orchestral samples and the inspiration from that meeting the synthetic. Uh, and I'm really happy to hear that like these really hold uh, their ground. They hold their own against even many of the newer uh, sample libraries that they put out. So it doesn't feel like I'm getting like the old heavy osti experience like obviously you can see those things in you know lack of legato and obviously this foldering um and obviously the, the interface can look uh, a bit sort of older but again there's nothing here that bothers me everything is laid out uh perfectly well and you know so i'm re these are really really aging well and i don't think they're uh i don't think i would change my perception on that anytime soon so um just because they've been around for a while uh shouldn't be taken as a as a negative sign in that way and actually quite the opposite if they're still around and selling well and being used then that's a testament testament to a great instrument and when an instrument is great it can withstand time in fact time becomes irrelevant just like with a good artist you you when you're listening to it you, you're not thinking about when was this made you're just enjoying the the great music um dark cycles devis devil's cello let's do dark cycles Just what I was saying. It, it just sounds great. So meaty, you know, sort of cl clamping down, crunching on, on your ears, but so tastefully balanced. Such a good job. Okay, we got fluttering heights, or from subdued to subduer. Okay, so first of all, how is this not in the ambient folder? How is this dirty and distorted? I mean, okay, if I do this, then it's probably distorted somehow. Um, secondly, absolutely beautiful. Thirdly, uh, reverb. And let's go crazy on this. Well, actually, the mix was really good. So. beautiful uh, yeah <laughs> yeah 
Give me Novocaine. Okay, that low end is really fucking crispy and nice. Uh, I would work whatever this mid-range is doing. I like, again, that stuttery stuff, but it's a bit too static. So I would dig in there, um, change it up. Nice elements together, not so sure, but... Um, intimate tides turning aggressive, that's oddly specific heavy OC. clipping there as well because such a distinct change in level uh yeah very nice low punch Interesting details. Hmm. Let's do March of the Derps. Derpy derp. <laughs> Really nice elements. Would need a bit of work for me to combine those into a track. Pump the throttle. great sounds if if they happen to serve you and your taste revolt
the fuck? <laughs> that was so good. That low end is so beefy. It's perfectly like crisp, but you know, beefy in the lows. That is truly stunning. Um, okay, one from S. We got speaking demons, string horns. Let's do. Let's do swimming with fidelity lapses. So good. So good. Ah, uh, wow. Wow. Let's do. Oh, I think I know trains coming is really good. I think I use this in one track. Yeah, just a stunning orchestral sequenced thing. Just uh, pretty mind blowing. Yeah, uh, I'm. Uh, wow. Um, a lot of the stuff is a lot better than I even remembered. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, pretty jaw dropping stuff. So effects and textures. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We've already been rolling for an hour, but. Uh, Let's do a few from here. Um, let's get the level up a bit. Yeah, pretty stunning imaging really cool uh, binary death sounds like it Yeah, really cool stuff for like a combat sequence where you don't want to use uh, harmony or or melody um, in a sort of a traditional sense. Um, I'm actually getting super excited about these because they're exactly what I've been uh, <laughs> looking for for a lot of the combat percussive stuff that I want to do that is not percussive it's it's not sourced from you know typically uh, traditionally per percussion instruments uh, so this uh, these are actually going to be really cool <laughs> It's a bit 
static. I like that many of these are actually, you can do harmony with them. Oftentimes I tend to love those where they kind of really reside at the the boundary of a, like a tolerable or understandable harmony. I love working with stuff like that. It just, uh, yeah, um, it's super interesting to my ear and brain. Yeah, again, beautifully percussive. There's a sense of that 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 pitch, but uh, you can do a lot with that. Let's do a couple of more here. Uh, okay, that's pretty out there. Let us do this. Really cool. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, super impressed by this. Can't wait to do a deep dive on that. We don't have that many presets, but I want to remain somewhat um, comprehensible, or you know, I can actually talk a bit. Uh, I want to do or I want to prioritize organic because I know there's good stuff in here. Synth has been. Uh, I haven't played around a lot with this, so we'll leave it uh, as last. But they are clearly, you know pushed into that synthetic uh, territory, which further, you know, expands the scope of what you can actually do with this. So, uh, but we'll come back to that. We'll do a few from here. Again, let's do the one per letter approach. So this is a organic folder. Again, I would drench that in, in reverb more, but that could be a beautiful pad. And beautiful those high textures really nice uh, cold calling wasn't this in one of the other why does that sound so familiar I don't know apparently not
beautiful. It's such a puffy, pleasant high pad. It, yeah, that's just nailing it. Uh... Very nice hybrid pad. Again, really loving that stuttery higher end. Wouldn't perhaps combine those two, but... Sounds really good. I would maybe, maybe look for a less intense sample underneath because it gets kind of a bit too dense. Sounds really good. Really beautiful. Out of the void. Yeah, that's uh, obviously you can get rid of the filtering. Uh, sounds really beefy and nice. I wonder if you could use that. Or I don't wonder. You could use that um, as a supportive beefer up for your strings as well if you wanted to. It's 
looks actually really nice. Um, yeah, you can make cool stuff with that. pretty cool as well again shows how much you can do with you know have great uh, spiccato samples and you have a good engine where there's momentum randomness you can really really do cool inspiring stuff that way okay so we got a ton of presets starting with s unlike the other other letters so let's do Stabbing the drama. Okay, so yeah, can fight a good, good uh, setting. On the limiter for that, but um, nice pad with a pinch of uh, rhythm. So I think that's organic. We'll do just a couple of from here. Um, mainly interested in the rhythmic ARP ones. So... really cool you can do cool stuff with that let's do chariots of heavy ostry Incredibly beefy. I don't tend to like the kind of bubbly, filterish stuff that happen at the top end, but you know, each to their own. <laughs> Cool. Darkest Dawn. Very nice. You can make good ambient music with that. Uh, yep. <laughs> um, Mm 
get the gist of it. Kind of in the, obviously in the same style. Let's do one more from here. Okay, I think that's enough. <laughs> it's super loud. Um, cool. I think that's all we want to do here in the string designer. Um, you know, again, if we open the loop designer, this is, uh, I'll just show you from, let's do straight and, hmm, what is, hmm, let's do straight and all lows. No. All, hmm. Rhythmic. So again, you look at the colors down here. The red zone takes care of the key. The purple, which is here, triggers all of the layers. As you see here, if I press this, it's going to trigger the green, blue, and orange. But if you just want to play green, you go into the green octave, blue, and orange, and so forth. Now, all rhythmic. I suspect this just crams all the rhythmic loops into one layer. Um, should probably actually just uh, show up this default performance combo. But again, same kind of sound, same kind of production quality. You're just dealing with a pre-made loop. So. That's me playing three layers simultaneously. You could also play this uh, purple trigger, which in fact here triggers not the same octave notes, but different ones in each. I think that's not the, the, the way it's laid out in Symphonic Destruction and stuff like that. But again, it's like a pre-made taste. Uh, that they've pre-made call. Um, so... Yeah, you get the gist of it. Uh, the loops are great. Uh, I think, as I said in the beginning, they're split in into forms that I find the most pleasant. If you're working with loops, most of the time I don't. If I find something super inspiring, maybe I'll uh, use one. But again, what I like about them is that they're not super... Many of them uh, are not super predetermined in terms of melody or harmony but again it exists here sounds in terms of the sonic quality sounds as good uh, as the as the string designer uh, it's just more set on rails because of those loops now traditional you obviously have your typical splits violins viola cello bass then they've gone with the high ensemble textures which I already mentioned to be absolutely stunning and then you have the slow ensemble which is really really good but quickly going through these let's collapse this should be looking better um, and again red keys here change uh, the you know <laughs> the, the style of playing that the expression you know what kind of a stuff you actually want to want to uh, be playing here but longs legatos and again well i said it doesn't have legato i still think that it doesn't even though it says but we'll uh we'll play it um and uh i'll be commenting as we go along let's first set the level here So yeah, longs work beautifully. 
for long stuff. So, I mean, that's obviously what it says. Long note. Um, so, I, well, I occasionally use these, um, but obviously it depends on the track. Although I do prefer to use libraries that sort of, like with the high texture ones here, they tend to be sort of more, the performance seems to be more sort of encoded in the sample itself, but... Uh, A lot of clipping at the end and here's the thing like uh, there's a lot of dynamic range I'm gonna put the limiter first to to zero added gain to make sure I get the top level right so that's around a seven and a half boost So again, I find it kind of the, the the dynamic range here. Oh, sorry, well you can't see that. The dynamic range in the lower end is absolutely beautiful. Like I'm genuinely stunned that without legatos, the releases of these uh, samples sound so good. So I would mainly be working pretty much in the <laughs> this sort of a uh, lower dynamic range and even going. Like to my taste, as you go to high to the dynamics, uh, it begins begins to be a bit too kind of pushy, and and it, it becomes a bit excessive, and it becomes extremely difficult to volume balance with the lower end. So I actually prefer to work in 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 this sort of a range, and I feel like I get full uh, dynamic expression that way. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm actually <laughs> again, I didn't remember how. How, how good those longs are. Um, so, yeah. Okay, legato mode. We, uh, I have no memory of this place. No memory of what this sounds like, so let's go. So again, here, up here, you got uh, legato mode. So you can do two. So you can actually play two notes at the same time. You got four voice. Um, I don't really... Like, if I'm doing legato stuff, then I'll just use one voice. I don't know if anyone does the, the, the multiple voicings well, or it, probably not the way I want to work with my brain. But, okay, this is the one voice. You can obviously hear um, the changes between the notes. actually better than I remember again you don't get those kind of like uh, different smooth uh, smoothened out transitions you don't get that kind of uh, glue in between so it is kind of very um, 
the the movement movement between the notes is a bit kind of uh, blocky. Obviously, with I don't like to do my dynamic passings as I play. Uh, it's just not enough control. I, I prefer to do them as separate passes, uh, so that will improve it. Obviously, good part writing, good music uh, helps a lot. Uh, but you don't get that kind of with a lot of the more modern libraries. You get a far smoother, realistic transition. But this is better than I remembered. I didn't even remember they had a legato uh, <laughs> one here. So, yeah, I mean, um, if you know what you're doing, you can make it uh, sound good, but uh, definitely not, you know, up to par with a lot of the other uh, offerings and, and options out there today. But, you know, obviously you'd be getting no vote for a bunch of other reasons that a bunch of other um, companies do not offer at all. Uh, or if they do offer it doesn't sound as good but yeah a bit of programming a bit of effects a um, bit of uh, envelope control which I would do here so um, yeah it's uh, could get away with it nice tremolos they move nicely play nicely there's no uh no sense of non-realism okay so spiccatos god damn these are good oh almost fucked up my neck again uh still having neck pain uh and and those kind of problems so sorry if i twitch in pain spiccatos really really fucking good Yeah, this very sharp very nice sound it, it to me and uh, and again like the the reverberation the space has a very orchestral very cinematic feel to it and actually when i compared this was a uh, maybe a week ago was comparing my string libraries to to one another to get a sense of like where each one's strengths are this has really beautiful imaging really wide and uh, uh you know big orchestral feel to it but but these these spiccatos really uh they really punch and kind of crunch through in a very nice way So yeah, I use them all the time when I'm working on orchestral stuff. Really, really good stuff. Um, 
Okay, viola, same thing. Actually really getting really becoming like a big fan of the longs I, I tend to never like longs don't tend to have the kind of magic magic is as just working with legatos from other libraries but something heavy austerity does with them is is very different I really like those and I love the lower end dynamic range like the texture the the attention to detail is really really stunning and again I, I wouldn't again <laughs> go uh, super high with these although this did feel a bit different to the violins Yeah, they respond so nicely in that low end. And I, I love like quiet textures, so it's nice. Yeah, but again, the dynamic range didn't feel as drastic to me in, in the violas. So, uh, legato. So you can get that kind of tug when you do the note transition. But and again, careful minded use of the dynamic control there. Tweaking the envelope filter, I'd make the release a bit sort of longer so it's more forgiveful. Good reverb. You'll uh you should be able to make great sounding music with that. Really liking the tremolos on the viola. That's kind of like a puffy, airy, sparse sound. And yeah, I like really playing in my spiccato dynamics with the velocity. Obviously, you can also oh, you can also write them in with the uh, dynamics uh, controller. Where's the button? There is a button for that. Uh, well, maybe watch another demo for that. <laughs> it's somewhere there. I just I'm fucking blind, and I'm still not. I have this five k. What five? 10, 4, 10, 4, 4K, 5K display. It's fucking massive and my old eyes cannot see properly. So, cello. shouldn't do like a fifth uh, uh, symmetric transition. Sounds like shit.
again i'm amazed by these longs they're so nice especially in the like again here the dynamic range is a bit excessive to the sound uh gets and this is difficult because i got to play with the limiter but uh, yeah gets there's a lot of range up there and there's quite a bit of range down here as well uh, i'm not complaining but it's like you got to find your uh the zone that works for the music so uh yeah got to be mindful of that but i i just love that there is that that beautiful texture and dynamic range there uh, i gotta remember this like these longs because these work a, uh, great for a lot of like ambient orchestral kind of a stuff okay legato I think that doesn't fare as as well as the other two uh really suffers from that kind of tug between the notes um and again i wish there was like if they have these legato samples um it, one could in theory assume that uh oh fuck, my neck is getting really bad one could assume that uh, they could maybe script some stuff to make it smoother in some of the modern ways. If they could, I mean, Novo, Forto, Vento, all those would become uh, just straight up killer libraries. That's really the only, only weak point that I see. dynamic range there is stunning that is vast really really quiet and here the top end the uh, of the dynamics really begins to work for me because there it sounds like it's it's like a it doesn't become more sort of boomy or pushy sounds like the players are really like digging it digging into it kind of texturally it becomes sort of more grittier and it sort of like it's tearing the the sound up uh, so this, that's, I really, really enjoy that. But, <laughs> but again, you have to be mindful of how you write your music so that you don't just go down to the teeny tiny dynamics, really quiet stuff here. Uh, when in truth, you want to be up here. So just, uh, just because the dynamics go to a certain extent on the screen doesn't mean uh, that's where you should be based on how you, you know, wrote it on your score. You know, use your ears. Uh, you know, listen to the flow of it and that that should dictate where it actually actually lies but this sounds amazing You really hear how they begin to bring in some of that top end. I don't know what it is, how they do it, but that air, that kind of, those sparkles begin to um, appear at the top, top end of the dynamic uh, range. Uh, yeah, really nice tremolos. <laughs> Yeah, 
really good. Gets a bit thin here, but you're you know in viola territory anyway, so maybe you don't want to do that with a with a cello. Again, a bit of limiter clipping was occurring there because the dy dynamic range is pretty wide, and again, when you're playing it, it's kind of hard to control where you want to go. I would mm, a lot of the time, depending on how how big of a field of dynamic there is in relation to what I feel like I can play here. I would maybe limit that a bit. Again, here you've got the dynamics uh, scale thingy, which you can slide. Uh, so that helps. Okay, we've got pizzicato here. to be done. Uh, clusters. So that's an additional tool for you to use. Uh, which is good. Oh yeah, I didn't play the pizzicatos on the viola. Let's do that fast. Or the violin, but I don't tend to use them a lot. Uh, sometimes I do, and sometimes it's absolutely what you want and need. Uh, but uh, they sound good. I mean, they sound good. <laughs> okay, bass. Beautiful. Uh, again, here the dynamic range works uh, so perfectly, uh, perfectly laid out to to my taste. Um, I would mainly work in the slower octave. You start to kind of push into cello territory, and then it kind of sounds a bit thin. So, just my two cents. I also got to work against the limiter with the dynamic range here, but it pff, stunning. <laughs> Again, same kind of tugging, that kind of stuff. Um, tremolo sounding great. So these don't sound as beefy as I'm used to. Okay, you've got pizzicato, solpon, tremolo, clusters, pizzicato cluster, but hey, uh, more, I think it's more useful to move into this. Uh, actually, let's do low ensemble because uh, and I'm going to do the spiccato only here because goddamn, this sounds beefy and good. <laughs> Yeah, really chunky, really beefy. I like that you get those 
um, bow noises, all of that kind of popping and uh, it's really nice. Really good. I use these all the time to basically double any low uh, spiccato string stuff that I'm doing. But high, so uh, high ensemble textures. Yeah, pretty much perfect. Like, again, it's so so easy and so you know flowy to 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 play these. Uh, I don't get any sense of like any tugging, any any lag, anything. Just such a pleasure to play, and it sounds absolutely stunning. beautiful <laughs> and it, what I'm surprised by I mean looking at the envelopes yeah like the, the release feels perfect like I would when I play this I would expect that I'm playing a modern uh, sample library like the, it's it's so playable so pleasant it just happens play it it's done uh, next up Gives you a sort of more upfront, um, kind of a more popping texture. beautiful glistening texture. I mean, again, like, how are these releases so good? Cool. Just uh, that's uh, perfect <laughs> for for that sound. So imaging is so beautiful. Playing texture, everything. It's, it's you would think this was done like this year, the, the, you know, specifically like well, many parts of this library. But this is like it sounds on par with anything that offer, offers these kind of similar textures. Just heartbreakingly beautiful. Uh, some of the best harmonics I've heard ever been done. I think that's it. Oh, fuck me. I've been going for two hours. Shit the bed. Well, well, there you have it. I think that will do for today. But uh, I, w I thought this was going to be slow, um, shorter. But this uh, just... Uh, blew me away and again like I, I went into the traditional part thinking that uh, uh, it's just, I'm, I'm going to glance over it but uh, there's so much 
good stuff there. I love these high texture uh, ensemble presets or, or these samples. Just uh, stunning, stunning stuff. Well, I think uh, that speaks for itself. Uh, this will be fun to timestamp, I'm sure. But uh, that's Novo. That's Novo. No, why can't I say that? Am I having a stroke? That is Novo. There we go. Um, one of the best string sample libraries out there. Like I said, like the brunt for me is in the uh, string designer engine. Uh, this evolved uh, approach because they're just so good. But you get everything in the traditional uh, folder as well as brilliant. The legatos aren't really uh, up to up to the the task in 2022 but again i hope i'm hoping if they have those legato samples then they uh actually could maybe go in there and uh, you know script them work the contact to to make them sound uh, more realistic but again they're still workable but everything else is is just uh, uh takes my breath away and i can't wait to be using this uh in the upcoming uh soundtrack but i think we've been uh talking enough this has been going on for long enough but uh yeah one of my favorite favorite uh string sample libraries so i uh, can't help it that it uh got a bit uh got a bit stretched out this video hopefully this helps you understand novo um and hopefully it helps you make a, an educated decision about whether you want to buy this like i said i bought this even even before heavy ost started uh, uh you know offering me opportunities to make demos of their stuff so uh yeah one of one of my favorites cool let me know what you think uh if you do head up to heavy ost's direction let them know where you came from and um uh, i think that's it for this video thanks for listening thanks for watching i will see you next time finished